We're going to switch into real estate right now. Now, according to Realtor Ed Salazar, he explained to us the last time he was on the show that the market in the Keys is pretty good. He said, we know this because the inventory is decreasing. So that means the amount of homes for sale are going down. Buying a home is a big move for anyone. So we're going to touch on this morning the steps that you can take if you happen to be in the market to purchase a new home. Ed, thank you for being back on the show today. Thank you for having me again. Let's start by talking about if there's anything new going on from the last time that we spoke, Ed. Well, we're, we're still pretty much where we were. Um, I noticed one thing. Uh, I do s different search criteria for different customers of mine. And one of the um, search criteria I did recently, I actually showed um, when I pulled everything up, they were actually in that certain criteria of the market. There were more properties under contract at this time than there are actually for sale. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, another indication that the, the inventory is, is remaining kind of low compared to, to years past. Okay, so that's a good thing, right? Uh, yeah, it shows, you know, it shows it's still, I don't know if it shows it's still a buyer's market, but it shows mm -hmm. it's a healthy market because mm -hmm. a lot of things are going under contract. But um, there's a couple of properties I wanted to talk about first mm -hmm. uh, that, are of some, that could be so, of some interest to your viewers um, because they're properties that within the last nine or ten months were purchased and then resold and at somewhat of a profit. Mm -hmm. And so... It may be that they're just anomalies at this time because we're not in that type of market where you can flip a property. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can invest and maybe make a little bit of money. But, uh, but anyway, these are, these are kind of interesting, and I ran across these recently. Um, one of them is at uh, 1312 William Street, which is around the Cass Marina area. This was purchased in November for $250,000 and uh, needed work. It was a renovation project. Um, the gentleman who bought it had no intentions of flipping it, so to speak. And flipping just basically means you buy it, you fix it up, you turn it around for a good profit. Okay. Um, his intentions were, he, he retired here, and his, his intentions were to live in the house. Well, he had some, some life changes, and so he, he sold it. Okay. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is, is that he bought it in November for 250000 and then he listed it in July after doing a little bit of work to it, enough to make a, a, a good enough difference where it looked really good. He listed it in uh, July for three ninety nine. It went under contract uh, in seven days, and ended up selling for three eighty six five last month, okay. um, which was a gain of about one hundred thirty six thousand in nine months. Mm -hmm. um, another one is sixteen oh five Duncan Street. Um, that was purchased in December for two hundred ninety thousand dollars cash, and I'm a little bit familiar with that property too. I'd shown it a couple times to some of my own customers. And that, too, was a little bit of a renovation project. Not so much as the, the Willing Street one, but it, it was a little bit of a project. That, uh, which was purchased originally in December for 290 cash, uh, was listed in July for 440000 went under contract in eight days, and closed actually three days ago for 440000 So it sold for full price. And that showed a gain of about 150000 in 10 months. So. These could be anomalies, but it's just in this market, it's kind of interesting mm -hmm. that you that have a couple of properties like this. Okay. So. Well, thank you for sharing that. And now let's get into buying a home right now, mm -hmm. Ed. I'm going to put myself into the role and say that I'm about ready to purchase a home. Okay. What's the first thing I would do? Well, if you're not paying cash, mm -hmm. you need to get qualified, mm -hmm. pre-qualified with a lender. And what that means is that you need to know what you can afford before you start searching. Mm -hmm. And you may have an idea of what you would like, and what I found with most buyers, um, what they like and what they can afford is a big difference in price. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you should do is, is get qualified with a lender. Okay. Now let's say that I'm getting a mortgage. Mm -hmm. How much cash would I need to be paying? Um, well, that depends. Um, you can come in with as little as 3.5% uh, if it's FHA financing. Mm -hmm. Or, actually, if you're well qualified, um, and you have a, a good income and a good credit history, in some cases you may actually be able to get 100% financing, which is not so common these days, um, but it's possible. Mm -hmm. Now, what are my payments going to be like, Ed? Well, the, the, the payments depend, of course, on all the numbers. Mm -hmm. you know, so here's, here's how I like to look at it. Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, with rates as they are today, mm -hmm. I kind of like to use as a basic rule of thumb, 
for every if if you're qualified if if you have a high score mm -hmm. okay then you're going to pay the minimum amount of, of rates okay and at that minimum rate basically for every hundred thousand dollars that you borrow kind of figure about five hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. it's not really going to be that much but when you're out there looking and you just want to kind of get a quick idea of what it's going to be uh, figure that so if you purchase a home and get a two hundred thousand dollar mortgage that's a thousand dollars for your principal and interest mm -hmm. and then on top of that you can have your taxes and insurance your taxes will be based upon the assessed value of the house and your insurance of course the insurance is more of a higher variable than the other ones are mm -hmm. so okay and now let's say that I find a house that I like mm -hmm. now, how much do I offer good question um, the best thing to do interesting thing here is use your realtor mm -hmm. to guide you to do what we call a comparable market analysis mm -hmm. so that you can get an idea of what comparable properties have sold for and so you can make an offer and the reason you want to make an offer based on the market is because if you're getting a mortgage that property is going to have to appraise mm -hmm. so if you want to offer more or if in your negotiating the seller demands more but it's something that we think it's not going to appraise, we would probably say, you know, you shouldn't do that because should you go down the line and it doesn't appraise, this is going to fall apart. Mm -hmm. Now, what really is all going to happen? Like, do I have to be under contract then, Ed, until the closing would go through? Or how does that work, okay. the end process? Okay, well, what will happen is you'll, you'll negotiate on the house mm -hmm. and between the seller and, and then you go into contract, mm -hmm. okay? You agree to buy, they agree to sell. What you'll have first is a, usually a couple of contingencies. One would most likely be an inspection period. Mm -hmm. And during the inspection period, you'll have the right to do one of three things, basically. Mm -hmm. um, you can either uh, accept the property as is and move to close. You could cancel mm -hmm. uh, in case you find anything wrong with it that you don't like and get whatever deposit money you have into it, you get that back. Or you could try to renegotiate. Mm -hmm. So those are your three options during the inspection period. After the inspection period, if it's contingent upon financing, then it'll be whether or not you get the loan. Mm -hmm. And then if there are no other contingencies than that, then once you have gotten loan approval and loan commitment, then it's what we call pending, and the only thing left is just to finish the title work and, and close. Okay. And of course, if I'd have any questions about this, you'd be able to answer those on the spot, wouldn't you? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, if anybody has questions for Ed as well, you can contact him by emailing the email address you see on the bottom of the screen, or you can call him at the number you see listed. Thanks, Ed, for sharing all this information this morning. Well, that's going to do it for me today, everyone. I thank you for tuning in this morning. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and you can join me back tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. and again at 8.30 a.m. Take care and have a great rest of your day.